Welcome to Gulfstream today. It is Ron Nicoletti joined by our track announcer Pete Aiello. Good afternoon, everyone. It is our final uh, day of the weekend that we'll be running. Uh, we have an 11 race card, and we've got both the main track, Pete, and the turf course listed as good this afternoon. Had some rain the, uh, yesterday in uh, track. I was uh, looking at it as we came in. Looks like it's drying out very nicely. See if we can make it through today. If it stays like this, we'll certainly have a fast track somewhere during the afternoon. We've got a, a ca carryover in the Rainbow Six, which starts in race number six. It's $11,000 plus, and uh, we'll see how that turns out. Once again, starts in race number six this afternoon. Good afternoon, Pete. How you doing? Well, we have good news and better news here today, Ronnie. <laughs> We're on the turf. That's the good news. The better news is if you're handicapping the races this afternoon, you will have a distinct advantage because you can handicap the turf course to favor off-the-pace runners. So definitely a tactical advantage if you're tuning into this program. Well, if you watched the racing yesterday, not only uh, on the turf course earlier on in the day, on the main track, everybody seemed to be closing down the center of the track, but we were dealing with sloppy conditions, so upgraded to good this afternoon. Before we delve into the car, let's see what's out there in Twitter world. And the first tweet we want to show you is our very own Ken and Sarah Ramsey, who spend the winning here. Perennial leading owners here were honored uh, with the Thoroughbred uh, Breeders and Owners Association uh, Breeders of the Year. And, you know, they do such a great job, and they're a track announcer's dream because those red and white colors are very easy to spot, <laughs> and you can certainly find them in the corner of Kitten's Joy Horses. <laughs> and uh, so that makes it very, very easy for me. I, key, I think the key word is there is Kitten's Joy. So certainly, and a horse that, that, that we know very well from Gulfstream Park, started his career here and actually uh, uh, was a pretty good horse, Silver Max. He's retiring. He's going to be at Adina Springs, and he was the one that defeated Wise Dan. He sure did. It was in the off-the-turf race at Keeneland. I remember that race well. I actually picked up Silver Max in my fantasy horse racing stable and toppled Wise Dan that afternoon. He made over $1.9 million, and he will be at Adina Springs. Of course, Adina Springs owned by our one and only owner here, and that is Mr. Frank Stronick. And also want to let everybody know that uh, we have a racing today at Assistant Track Laurel. They've been dealing with some off weather up there, too. Races five and six today at Laurel are off the turf, but the sixth and ninth are still on the turf. And so uh, Laurel opened up yesterday. A nice card next week. they got a bunch of uh, graded stakes races. Yeah, we talked about it yesterday about the South Florida horse formal summation and the Laurel Futurity. He won that race. It came off the grass, but he won it easily. So congratulations to Kathleen O'Connell and the connections of formal summation. Yeah, Kathleen O'Connell having a great uh, summer shipping around out of Gulfstream Park and uh, nailing some uh, big races and coming back home. Cannot wait to see Lady Shipman run again. She is an absolute freak. And, you know, before we get into this Sunday card, one other thing we want to show you, and that's a replay of yesterday's Sensitive Prince, and what a nice performance by a horse that we know very well down here, and that is East Hall. You called it Pete, so go right ahead. Yeah, he was far back early. Gaffleone spied an opening between Rich Daddy and Super Lucky, took full use of it. Short stretch of the mile in a 16th run, but it's over right here. How about Rich Daddy, though, for Jose Garofalo? He ends up third in the race. You could have had him for 62-5, just a few weeks ago. The favorite did not fire. Super Lucky covered too much ground too soon, and the early pace setter Fish Fan could not find in the stretch. But again, the racetrack was tiring at that point. You know, when I was on the stage here, I looked up at just before I went off, uh, uh, East, East Hall was sitting up there 2 to 1. Ended up going off, I thought, a great price of 9 to 2 in that race. Looked like a close, and as we mentioned, the track throughout the afternoon started a favorite of horses that just ran just like that. So let's go to our Sunday card now. First race is on the turf. We mentioned that the top. The turf is good. Seven and a half furlongs. Claim is Phillies and Mares. Three and up. $12,500. They're non-winners of two in life. Eight runners in the field. Pete, you went with the number six horse in here, and that is Dayoagua. How do you say him? Dayoagua. is how I've been going. If it's wrong, please correct me, but DK Agua is a horse. We've touched on it already on the program. My logic here is I want to find horses that I know can handle turf racing off the speed with cut in the ground. We talked about, yeah, we talked about that <laughs> yesterday. We invented the cut in the ground moment. I think DK Agua sits a good trip here from off the speed. Back in the barn of Manny Estevez after a couple starts for Peter Walder. Sonny Leon has the call, takes over for Luca Panici. That'll be interesting to see how that plays out, but DK Agua won't be favored. The favorite will be your top play and a horse who I think has a big chance, Caribbean Prince. Yeah, well, you have it in second. I have it on top, as you mentioned. Caribbean Prince is dropping to this 12-5 uh, level. Turning back today to 7 
11 and a half furlongs after stalking the pace. Flattening out, now race finished fifth, but it was against $20,000. Two lifetime claimers going a while. But the problem I have with this horse, I'm going to be the one to beat. One for 17 record for me is an obvious concern. Here's the good news. The good news is she won by five and a half uh, uh, back in May at Gulfstream Park. That turf course was labeled firm, but you heard it here first. There was cut that day. There was cut in the ground, and uh, I used the three sweet candy, and I uh, used uh, the one horse in here. I mean, the, excuse me, the two horse on your ticket, and that's Polly My Love. Yeah, I think she might get first run on the Caribbean Princess and DK Agua. Polly My Love makes another rider switch today. She's trying to find her pilot. Diego Gomez takes over the call, always does well on the grass. Well, we're going to the main track for race number two, and as you see on your screen, or if you're not uh, available to see it on the screen, the main track is listed as good today. Six furlongs, claim is three and up, non-winners of three races in life or three-year-olds, $12,500, no scratches in the race or jockey changes. Want to go back and show you the performance of uh, the one horse that is right on ready. Was not right or ready at the start. Absolutely correct. We're going to take two looks at it here. First, we'll look at the head-on. You're looking at the four right on ready. You can see he was fractious there, and he just, you know, I say it all the time, and some people don't understand. He didn't find his feet. He wasn't underneath ready to go. We'll look at it again uh, from the uh, pan shot there right on ready. was far back. That was his debut for this ball. And Michael Petro completely draw a line through that race. Horse had to use too much of his energy early on in the race to be a contender. That's the good news. The bad news is he's going to be favored. And the worst news is for me, even though I like him on top, I think he's a much the best horse in here. But here's my question. You claim him for 25. You have a complete alibi when running him back off the claim. Right. Now he's in for 12-5. And I hope the answer to that is, well, Pete, it's Frank Calabrese. He likes to win races. If he does, this is going to be one of them, I think. Well, that barn is known for doing just that. So a lot of times, you know, you see a horse drop, you say, oh, my goodness, why the big drop? And uh, Mr. Calabrese likes to win races. I did go with the number four, who you did not use on your ticket. That's Frankie's trigger. He spotted perfectly against these 12-5, three-lifetime claimers. After dueling early and drawing clear late to defeat $12,500 starter allowance company at this distance, Safi Joseph Jr., uh, Jesus Rios in the saddle. I thought this horse fits the condition perfectly for me, at least. Well, it would come as no surprise to you that this horse would be on my list, and that's not a good list. No. Uh, I needed voter turnout in the worst way last time <laughs> out, so I do hold a grudge. Yo, that's Frankie's, right, he does. <laughs> and I knew you would have him, so it wouldn't, he would not, uh, get, not get his airtime that he was due there. So the second horse I used was the five tricky call. I thought this race was pretty tricky myself. If you don't like right on ready, in my opinion, you have to buy the race because everyone else looks about the same. Yeah, and I threw in the uh, seven meet those the eight yep Mitos Yeandos, and this one is a uh, move to the Tammy uh, Levy Bon Villa to claim. It's been in pretty good form. This one, uh, twi le uh, trainer le uh, Levy is 22% with new claims. A horse you might want to put on your ticket, and that one is what on the board? Uh, 15 to 1. Am I seeing that right? Wow. Okay. I'll go with that. Race three, one mile. Claim is Phillies and Mares, three and up, $6,250. Scratch to one. Time for Harlan. Let's take a rewind and look at Princess Maya last time out. Uh, we're going to see her from the quarter pull on. Yeah, you can see her there. She's buried in traffic. She's got no place to go. She's trying to find, she's trying her head up sideways. Castro can find her no clear racetrack. Mind you, folks, she was about three lengths off the lead before that. Now she's, what, six or seven behind? She let Wisdom of Oz, who was coming in from New York, get too far in front of her. And, oh, by the way, she's only two to five in this race. So Princess Malia definitely had an alibi last time out. It was a rough, rough trip. I thought she was kind of a false favorite last time out to begin with. But now, here's Peter Walder, who reaches in for 12-5 and plunges to 62-5. It's the same story as the second race. Why do you claim and drop? But I think the answer to that question is the same. This horse carries the Luch Lime Green, and the owner of Luch Racing loves to win races. Yeah, see, I didn't have that much confidence in the drop as they did in the previous race with Calabrese. But yeah, it's absolutely the one to beat in there. I used the two in second, who used the third. Bahia de Oro moved to the Angel Rodriguez Bond. Also went there via the claiming route after rallying from way back. 16 lengths off the pace to come within the neck of notching her second consecutive victory at this level and distance. You're going to have Edgar Zayas in the saddle. A horse I think you got to have on your ticket. I agree with that, but uh, I used her third. The horse I used second. Here's the thing about this race, folks. Princess Malia, based on form, based on class, based on connections, she's supposed to win, but that's not always the way it plays out. So from a tactical standpoint, if you want a tactical advantage, I can give you one in the form of number four, My House. 
because she's going to be winging up top, and that trouble call last time out doesn't tell the entire story. Stumble, badly start. Boy, was that a true statement. Yeah. She pretty much got nose on her, or dirt on her nose leaving there. She ran terrible. She switched barns again. Josie Gomez reunited with this mare. She does very, very well on my house, and I think that the plan, as always with my house, go as fast as you can, as far as you can, and I think that might work here. Well, I, I had secret memory who have in third as part of the pace scenario, and I thought maybe that would, uh, you know, maybe cancel them both out early, and, and that's why I threw the seven secret memory in third today. I thought that one had some tactical speed and could run well in that spot. Race number four this afternoon is a six furlong claimer. Phillies and mares, three-year-olds and up $6,250, eight runners in the field, and uh, we have a clean slate with no scratches or jockey changes. I went with the three horse in here, and I'll start it off. Benny first baby. Pete also has this horse on his ticket. Dropping to this level today. First start since uh, failing to fire when she was claimed out of a $12,500 optional claimer. That was back on July 25th. It's a daughter of Benny the Bull who won a previous race at this level. But, oh, just about 18 lengths. That was back on May 28th. And boasts uh, a three furlong bullet. 36 and 3 in preparation for return to action. So going back at this level last time out. One for fun. And I just thought this one was the one to beat. I'm glad to see you and have it on your ticket. But you went with the f horse I have in second on top, and that is the four. Yeah, stop. Yeah, I think the cream rises to the top here. The top three contenders here are the numbers one, three, and four. For me, Ya Asta merits the best consideration. The three horse in that race, Benny First Baby, seems to me to be on the wrong end of the form cycle, but I don't want to sound like a broken record, and I know you don't mm -hmm. either, but here's again, Calabrese claims him for 12, puts him back in for 62.5. The fascinating thing about this for me, Angel Rodriguez, the trainer, not Michael Petro. Yeah, not Mike Petro. Well, yesterday, just split him around a little bit, gave one to him. We got the logical three, I think, in race number four this afternoon. We're going back to the turf for the fifth, one mile and one. 16th maiden claimers, Phillies and Mans, three year olds and up, $12,500. Clean slate, once again, 10 runners in that field. And I know Pete will be ready to call this race. I went with the eight and third. You went with them on top. Please tell me why. You all talking to me? Well, that wasn't a strong selection, to be honest, but I think that this is a filly that should, certainly should improve. Victor Barboza has actually been doing sneaky good with his claims. Zoombox comes to mind, as well as Dreaming of Lawrence. So he's, this guy's been winning some races and moving up on horses. You all talking to me was a heavy favorite two starts ago, while second went favored last time out. Didn't run bad, but didn't run great either. I think this is just that kind of race. Uh, some of these horses' form look like my love life, and that's not a good idea. Yeah, you don't want to be doing that. And this is a daughter of Concord Point. I don't know much about about Concord Point, but bye, tap it. Tap it, I know about. So, you all talking to me, number eight on my ticket, but I did go with the number two on top, who Pete has in second at Pat M's image, stretching out today to one mile and one sixteenth, a uh, duel for, for the lead throughout, and finished the game second against similar going seven and a half furlongs. It's the daughter of Leroy Asalamu, uh, bred to get the added distance, but as Pete says, he's worried about the cut in the ground. This one has got speed, but Edgar Zayas, a sharp cookie, does not have to be on the lead. If he can sit off, who might somebody else who might get the pace, this horse can run well. Yeah, look at the race two back when Carabao rode her. She doesn't need the lead. She can come from far back if you want her to. I took a lot of heat last time Lynn's image ran because I put Lynn's image right on top. The logic was that I thought she could get over the ground. So based because of the fact that I pretty much want to keep my job because this heat was coming from the top, I'm not going to pick Lynn's image on top. She's 0 for 37. But I do think she hits the top four. So, again, for the person who gave me that heat, the top four, Lynn's image today. <laughs> Lynn's image written today by Pedro Mantare Jr. The Rainbow Six, as we mentioned, starts in race number six, $11,000 plus in that pool. Five and a half furlongs claim his Phillies and Mares, three and up. Non winners of two races in lifetime, $6,250. Scratch the four, Transuente, scratch the nine, front cover dream, a work on fast play, Twilly, uh, on uh, August. 24th, right here at Gulfstream 39, but Pete will update you on that work a little later on. Uh, Pete, you went with the horse I have in second, and that is the five exclusively Dixie. Well, let's not talk about exclusively Dixie yet. Let's let you take center okay. stage. You have Awesome American right on top, 10 to 1 on the morning line. My question to you, very simple, do you get 10 to 1? I don't think you get 10 to 1 in here, but I don't know if you'll, it'll be the favorite, but this one is turned back today, talking about American Awesome to 5.5 furlongs, went up and set the pace, week and late to finish third. That was going with 6.5 furlongs. Bill Kaplan has got his go-to jock in here, Juan Labor in the saddle. Originally, this horse had the 10-pound apprentice uh, named 
to ride him, you know, when they first came out, and I just thought with the 10 pounds would even be better. I just didn't see this as a speed play. But with that said, yesterday, speed, not the big uh, thing on the main track, but we had a lot more rain, uh, you know, during the afternoon to change the track, uh, the way the track was playing. But I like Awesome American. Certainly love the connections. Bill Kaplan on top of the ticket. That is why I used it up there. You went with the five, as I mentioned, exclusively Dixie from the Sally Mitchell Hill Barn. Well, here's why. Let's take a look at this field really quick. Number one, LG's Rose is a turf horse. Number two, Rona Daytona, who I used on my ticket, is very, very consistent, but doesn't like to win races. Number three, Sakura is a turf horse. Number four is out. Five is my top play. Six is a resident long shot in the field. Seven is a turf horse. You use the eight, so did I, and the nine is out. You're left with not many to choose from. Exclusively, Dixie makes her second start off an extended vacation. Goes turf to dirt here this afternoon. Gaffleon sees fit to ride. He rode her when she broke her maiden at Gulfstream here back in June. I think she's another horse that, like your awesome American, might be a speed play here. Yeah, and you know, a wildcat hit, as you mentioned, one of the turf horses. They're going back to the main track. Going to race with the blinkers off today. All me Mirage, the trainer, limited sampling. He's two for five, 40 percent with horses racing with the blinkers off. And uh, I, I think the top two I happen to like in there is the uh, eight and five. I think it's the logical ones. You had the two in there, Rayona Daytona. Yeah, I think she hits the ticket. I wouldn't use her if you're a multi-leg player. You know, this race uh, does start the Rainbow Six. I'm not using Rona Daytona in my Rainbow Six, but she will hit the board. Well, race number seven is where our pick five starts. Uh, the last five races on the card. It's a 50 cent wager. Seven and a half furlongs on the turf, an allowance optional claimer, fillies and mares, three and up, $25,000. We'll have nine in the field. And Pete, you went with the horse I have on second. You have it right on top. JL's Princess. Do you want me to start with the two again, or would you like to start? It's completely up to you. I'm not going to fix it if it's not broken. JL's Princess has won three in a row. She goes out for a sharp outfit. She has my main man, Jonathan Gonzalez, in the irons. All the indications were for me. She's coming from off the pace. She's proven she can handle cutting the ground. Cut. So everything should be good there with JL's Princess. She hasn't been seen since January. That's the caveat here. Well, it's not like me to pick favorites, but I happen to end on the favorite right here. And that is too little. What do you, what's that face? Stop little like bit lovely is dropping to the $25,000 optional claiming level. After opening that quick two and a half length lead, goes up, sets the pace, gets nipped at the wire. That's a $75,000 optional claimer going a mile. Turn back to seven and a half furlongs, another plus. But this is a speedy daughter of Andan. So does this, uh, if the cutting the ground theory is right again today, we'll see how number two, Little Bit Lovely, does dropping down. You know, I don't know what this, that $75,000 optional claimer translate to this $25,000 optional claimer. Well, even if the cutting the ground theory is wrong, she's got two big problems. One is Sweet Mary. The other is Will to Shine. Right. She's going to have pace pressure early. Yeah, I threw Will to Shine on my ticket. Who else did you use? Uh, image of Rachel. I think that uh, she may be a long shot possibility not to win, but I think she can hit the ticket uh, at a big price for Barry Rose. I'm looking for Barry Rose to hit the board twice this afternoon. Well, you know, on the ticket there, and that's what helps those uh, tries and supers pay a lot of money, and you being a multiple wager player, you like all that stuff and does a good <laughs> job at it. Let's go to race number eight today. One mile, claim is three and up. None winners of three in life or race since March 13th or three-year-olds. You got all that? Scratch the eight Rockies home run. I went with the two. Boom, boom, Frankie. Dropping to the twelve six thousand two hundred fifty dollar level, hitting the board of one or two races against better, going to two ten mile on the turf. Larry Pilati, here's the stat I liked, and Larry Pilati been doing very well with him all summer long. Five for eleven, forty five percent with horses going from turf to dirt. Right on top of my ticket. I know you got him in third, and you went with the horse I have in second, Storm Warnings. We're almost thinking alike today. Yeah, no, I th I, yeah, I think so. I, we, yeah. We're at least on the same page. We might not be on opposite sides of the page, right. but we're, we're printed on the same page. Storm Warnings here this afternoon goes out for veteran conditioner George Handy. Got to love that, first of all. Second of all, because he's, you know, George Handy is what I would consider of the old school, you're not expecting a horse to be ready off a year layoff. I didn't think he had a prayer last time out. He ran really well. He took a 
lot of money. He finished second. As long as he takes a logical progression forward today, I think he wins and wins fairly easily. The bad news for me is Boom Boom Frankie, awfully sharp. As you touched on, Ronnie, he's coming off the grass, but the last time he ran on the main track, he was in against 12-5. That's double today's tag, and he was an easy winner. Yeah, and George Handy, how could you not root for him? Just 94 years young, that's all, and he looks uh, better than I do, that's for sure. Who else did you use? You also used the number, oh, no, Boom Boom Frankie, we talked about the number four horse in there, Speed Trap. Yes, yeah, I think Speed Trap's a horse who's a fringe player. For me, I have a strong opinion here. I like number seven, Storm Warnings. I think Tyler's going to get him home uh, on top here this afternoon. Boom Boom Frankie is the arch nemesis, the arch rival, and a wagering rival as well. They'll be the top two in the betting. Yeah, you know, Zoombox, I throw on my ticket on the inside, got tactical speed. What I like about this horse, when you're dealing with these type of races, you look at his record this year. He's had nine races, you know, but he's had three wins in two seconds. So once again, a horse that maybe not can win it, but certainly belongs somewhere on your exact trifecta ticket. When you deal with this level of competition, you like to see a horse that's done something other horses in the race hasn't done, and that's won three times this year. Yeah, and Victor Barboza Jr. is the guy that's been doing a lot of that good work with Zoombox lately. He was somewhat of a cast-off, but he's turned his career around. He has a chance here this afternoon. Well, our ninth race is our feature race. It's seven furlongs, three-year-olds, 75,000. It's the three chopped road. We're going to have eight runners in the field and the morning line favorite in my top selection number three, Unbridled Hero. We're going to go back and show you this horse's performance went from not finishing the race to uh, wearing blinkers and just being totally impressive for trainer Ralph Nix. And you can see the performance right now, Pete. I know you just saw, saw it and called it. Yeah, well, he was a horse that was described to me as having a lot of nervousness behind the gate. He got himself all worked up. He would you know, be a little too nervous coming out of there, and it led him to not uh, be again his career too well. They put the blinkers on him. To be honest, I think the blinkers actually helped him focus, but at the same time, he might have actually been able to relax a little bit because he was focused. He won easily. Gaffalio never had to touch him. Now, here's the thing. He was racing against maiden special weights. We always are worried about horses going from maiden special weight to allowance races. Now we're asking him to step up from Maiden Special Weight to Stakes here this afternoon. You went with the eight sink praises, and that's uh, from Stanley Goldbarn. How could you go wrong with picking any of Stanley Gold's horses in this race? And you did right on top. It's hard for me to imagine that he would be 6-1 to one as a 3-year-old in a $75,000 stakes race, given what we saw from him last year as a 2-year-old. Granted, he, he deserves to be 6-1 to one in here because he has not run the races that he ran as a 2-year-old. However, a horse has made $410,000. Nobody else in this race has cracked 100000 I'll go with the class of the field and hope Zayas can send him out from the outside gate and take him all the way. Well, the other Stanley Gold in here is the two here, that tune, uh, you know, from Stanley Gold. And I, I see this horse is also having a chance to rebound. You know, he's got some class. But here's the horse I'm interested in. Me and too. that is the seventh Me, fear. The yep. Cowboy makes his first start. He was second behind the great. Two Fountain of Youth winner at Itsunaka, who was placed first in that race. Uh, that was in the $75,000 optional claimer. Right here during the championship meet, the trainer Efren Loza Jr. does an excellent job with horses coming off the layoff. He's the son of Cowboy Cal, and he's been working up a storm across town at Coastal Park West. This is the intriguing horse to me in the race. We talked about it yesterday. I don't remember about how that ended up, but here you got two wise guys on camera. <laughs> this is the wise guy horse here. I agree with you 100%. Through the Cowboy is a horse that goes for a barn that yesterday, one with look into my eyes, she was off a similar layoff two starts ago, aired, came back and aired again. So everything says to me that Fear the Cowboy is ready to roll here. Yeah, and that was the wise guy horse we talked about yesterday, actually. Oh, well, one. she won. Yeah, so we're she won. All set. Uh, so we're actually one for one on wise guy angle. So let's go to race number 10, seven furlongs, allowance, optional claim. It's state bred, three-year-olds. The claiming level is $12,500. Got nine runners in this field. I went with the number six in here, a bounding, a legacy. Now a gelding is making his first start uh, since surrender. Uh, a mid-race lead that day to finish fourth behind the Vid Stakes winner. Johnny Hans, remember this horse, was the only horse the race came off the turf. He stayed in. He ran really well. And a horse that he ran, uh, you know, was in this race, and that's Toes Gray Cat. Uh, it's the son of Flash Storm, working consistently for the return. Ralph Nix Barn, I like this horse on the ticket. Put him right on top. I uh, didn't know what to do with him, but a bounding legacy. One thing I can tell you about his last race, two turns and a mile and a sixteenth, not his 
think. You went with Valley Concept and here is on the board. I believe at ten to one. Yeah, I, I was. I, I was again. This is a race for me. Not a huge delineation between the top horses and the bottom horses. I think Valid Concept wants to go a little longer than seven eighths, but I also think that he's going to have some pace to chase here. He's a veteran campaigner that's been running against veteran campaigners, and I think here he fits well against this allowance field. And you know, the, probably a horse that might end up going off favorite in here, and uh, I think uh, is the Seven Toes Great Cat. Of course, is making his first start since he went up and chased the pace. That was against fifty thousand dollar optional claimers. Was back on July twenty fourth. Peter Walder, excellent with this uh, kind of freshening, you know, near 30%. Ed Caprano ships out of town yesterday, wins the Super Derby, and comes back today. He's named on Toe's Great Cat, I believe, and he'll be riding uh, in the race. And uh, your horse, that's a, a five-time local winner. Well, if you want to take a look at Toe's Great Cat's company lines, we already touched on Johnny Hansen, right. who came back to win a stake. Last time out, he's odds on, and he did not run well. The horse who was second, Your Dreams Are Mine, came back to win a stake. The horse who was third, Rich Daddy, was third in the stake yesterday. Yeah. So there you go. So let's go to race number 11. Let's you got something else here in race 10. No, no. I have the race number 11. Solid single. Best bet of the day. Go to the ATM and withdraw all of your dough. This horse will win. You heard it here first. That six furlongs maiden claim is three and up $10,000. And I'm thinking that's got to be the number five, El Guiar River. Absolutely. Edgar Zayas, send, send, and send some more. They're not fast enough to catch you. They're not fast enough to keep up early. He takes a drop in class here this afternoon. There's a huge, huge difference between bottom level maidens and anything else in the maiden ranks in South Florida. El Garay River is, is up. Dropped to win here this afternoon, as we would say if we were if it was a commodity. He's priced to sell. I think he's an easy winner. He'll be a short mutual, but who cares? He's a solid single in the pick four, pick three, and late daily. Double. Well, if there's that old cut in the ground type thing here, number four, <laughs> Indianus is uh, stretching out slightly. Uh, this is on the dirt, by the way. <laughs> oh, it don't matter. I like saying cut on the ground. This one is stretching out slightly after rallying to come within the length. As the favorite, or exiting the maiden ranks against this caliber competition, going five and a half furlongs. If the speed should get suicidal on the front end, doesn't it set up for four in the artist? He's 0 for 15. If he's 1 for 16, uh, I'll see you guys on Thursday. All right. We both have the one Starship Menace who ran pretty well last time out. Yeah, he sure did. He ran well. Awesome Union was in the second race yesterday against winners, took money and folded shop. Starship Menace seems to be getting into better form. That makes sense when you're Steve Dwoskin. They round into form nicely. Well, we are going to see if the cut in the ground angle holds true two days in a row. Pete and I are going to have a lot of fun the rest of the afternoon. We hope you two guys, uh, you guys out there have it. Well, maybe you. there's only two. I don't know. <laughs> no, no. There's a lot more than two. There's two guys up here. So what do you think, Pete? Any closing words? El Guare River or Bust, single in the Rainbow Six. We'll see you Thursday. Go Dolphins. Rainbow Six is back and it's better than ever. Now with a 20 cent base wager, it will expand the market for the popular bet. And in addition to doubling the base wager, the percentage return for the...